Hey everyone, welcome to Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast. This podcast is all about farmer's markets. Whether you're a farmer's market manager or a small farmer, food maker, or artisan selling at farmer's markets, you have found just the right podcast. I'm Kat fields White, And I'm Bridget Myers. We're longtime farmer's market managers, educators, and consultants. Today, we're going to talk about marketing your market merch. Say that five times fast. Marketing your market merch. Mar- <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode of Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast, is supported by Square, helping small farmers, food makers, crafters, and market managers increase their incomes by making it easy to process credit and debit card sales on the street and in the tents. We use Square ourselves for selling shopping bags and t-shirts at our market info booths and for invoicing farmers and vendors online for space fees. The income you generate appears promptly in your bank account without spending time or money on end-of-day closeouts. Square's user-friendly system makes it easy for our farmers and vendors to track inventory and sales tax and generate clear reports. For more information on reducing stress and increasing your income with Square, click their logo on the resource page at FarmersMarketPros.com. Welcome back to Tent Talk, everybody. All right, so one of our favorite things when we travel is visiting farmers markets in other states and countries and bringing home fun market merchandise. I love all that stuff. And actually... You're sort of a merch queen yourself at your markets. You've printed so many clever bags and things lately. Also, we had such a good time and stole or picked up some great (laughs) ideas at the merch swap at the Intense Conference last month. You know what I say about the Intense Conference? Mm. It's so that we can steal each other's ideas. Exactly. That's what the whole point. Like, what do you do? I'm going to do that exact same thing at my market. No kidding. There's actually a conference for entrepreneurs that's in Philly every year called Steal This Idea. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Because we should be, because who cares? That's right. Because it just is the greater benefit. does it their own way. Yeah, exactly. We all have our different take on it. Yep. Yes, I love a good merch. I'm always buying merch. I own so much market merch. I literally buy something from every single market that I've ever been to in my life, and I wear it all the time. And you create a lot for your market. And I do. And yeah, lately I've been creating creating some new stuff, and I have some new stuff coming down the pipeline. But I really like it, because sometimes our job is boring and involves lots of paperwork, which I'm a creative Permits, person and I got kind of, I'm kind of trapped in this actual business. So it's a nice like creative outlet. Don't That's, think of it as trapped. Oh, I mean. Think of it as welcomed into this interesting business. <laughs> no, you trapped me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I love all that stuff too. I love permits and paperwork. And I also want to design some cool merch. Yeah. And I'm not an artist, but Um, I do appreciate a good merch item, and so I like to develop that for my market because it's a great marketing tool and also a source of revenue, as we're going to discuss. Yeah. Shout out to graphic artists, by the way. And to Canva. Hey, oh, oh, we can't do that in the same sentence. I don't think graphic artists like Canva. Uh, I think you're right. (laughs) But let's face it, we need a little bit of both sometimes. You you know? There's simple things Mm -hmm. that we just got to crank out. And I mean, really, what graphic designer likes you calling them and saying, I need this in the next 15 minutes because my uh, newsletter's going out right now. <laughs> they probably, at that moment, appreciate that you can access Canva. Can but for things too. like merch, where you're doing a beautiful design, mm-hmm. of course, we go back to our graphic designers. Of course. That's what we need. And having merch at your market's welcome booth is a cool way to raise a little extra money to cover operating expenses, could be nice margins, and help subsidize farmers' space rents. Uh, and it's a smart... A smart way to help people remember to visit the market each week. So definitely brings in the revenue and it's a good marketing tool. Yeah. I mean, so much of both. Absolutely. The more stuff that you can get into people's hands with your market name and logo on it, mm-hmm. the, the more often they will remember to come back to your market. So there's there's really basic stuff that's really designed mostly to help folks remember to come to the market. And, yeah. and those kind of things, I think, are like magnets. Yeah. Calendars. Mm-hmm. Magnets with calendars on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, an idea just hit me. We should do a meal planning kind of whiteboard thing with the market logo on it. I this mean, is come smart. on. This is smart. Because I use a whiteboard for my meal plan, but me too. it's just boring old white. Me too. We could have a market logo on there. Exactly. Okay, genius. All right, everybody, steal this idea. <laughs> right. See, we're sharing. There you go. We're sharing because we care. Putting it out there. And then there's merch that helps people shop for mm-hmm. the stuff at your markets. In addition to being a marketing tool or an income stream, there's things that just actually help people buy more at the market. So, you know, obviously, first and foremost, number one, what does everybody print if they're printing nothing else? Shopping bags, right? For sure. Because if I see one more Trader Joe's shopping bag at my market, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> so you want to get everyone to carry your market shopping bag. Or you know what I what I don't mind is if someone has another farmer's market bag, like a yeah, neighboring market. Okay. I kind of love that, actually. 
But yes, a shopping bag will always lead to more sales because if you're at a market and your hands are full and you're juggling all these little things that you bought or you have like plastic farmer bags and they're like putting an indentation in your arm as you're carrying around all this heavy stuff and you're struggling, you probably want to leave. But if you have a nice like durable insulated shopping bag or like thick canvas straps that you can put on and it's comfy to carry around a bunch of stuff, you're going to stay and you're going to buy more things. That's right. It's simple. And I've it's literally obvious. seen it. It's a fact. It's not an opinion. I've seen it with my eyes. Yeah. So, and I've experienced it. It's obvious. So there's all kinds of bags. I mean, there's insulated bags, like you mentioned. There's mm-hmm. four-color fancy bags that you sell. There's giveaway bags. So, like, sometimes we'll do a really lightweight canvas bag mm-hmm. to celebrate a new market or mark an occasion, a holiday or something. Didn't you do I Love Bags for Valentine's Day yeah. or something recently? Yeah, I just had, like, I was literally, like, watching... A show with my husband at 10 p.m. at night. And I don't know. I was like, I should print little canvas bags that say I love the Little Lily Mercado and have our team hand them out to people because our market was happening on Valentine's Day. Oh, that's right. It was Wednesday. So it's February 14th. And I ordered them from Amazon. Sorry. Uh, But it was fast. (laughs) But I ordered 96. And then you did lose our local printer to put your tag like that on there, Of course I did. Of course I did. And I just went in Canva and I put our logo in there. And then I just typed I love the above it. Real easy. Or like I heart the. And I sent it to our local printer. And actually, I will say, this is not something a big company would do. But our local printer said, what kind of ink do you want? And I'm like, oh, just use black. He's like, you should use red. It's Valentine's Day. Genius. (laughs) Genius. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Potts. And it, he printed it in red, and they looked so cute. They were so cute. And our team handed them out to shoppers for free. I think it came out to like $3.19 per bag, my cost. Uh-huh. But that's super cheap yeah. to just hand out. And it was like such a great little thing to do on Valentine's Day. It was also like kind of a not-so-great weather day. It was cloudy and sprinkling and on and off. And so that was a nice like encouraging thing for the vendors to make more sales because people had a bag to carry their items around in. So. And it feels like a special thank you to those folks that come out, even if it's a little drizzly or gloomy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. A little Every bonus. once in a while, just investing in that, just consider it a marketing expense to mm-hmm. give things away to your customers, especially a customers that may be a newer or smaller market or or one that's been dealing with weather stuff for a season. Exactly. Yeah, it's a nice little boost. Even though we still sold, like, our bigger insulated bags that day, too, and then we had the canvas bag giveaway, it didn't, like, super dip into our insulated bag sales. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. I think you can – a lot of people can be doing bags at the same time. Yeah. I mean, there's so many choices when it comes to bags. So, they're, like, the insulated bags we do, I think, are made out of recycled materials. We've always tried to make sure that happens. They make them out of old – water bottles or something. Yeah. It's all voodoo magic to me how they make that happen, but <laughs> they assure me that that's what's happening. Um, you can do a lightweight canvas like you're talking about that's pretty inexpensive, mm-hmm. simple. Uh, you can do a really heavy canvas bag. We've had some heavy ones lately. I like a bag with a zipper. Yeah. A lot of people do, actually. Yeah. I think, I mean, I mostly do, I think, as well, but we get a lot of comments that our bag has a zipper. People like that. Yeah. Um you got to watch the length of the straps. Mm-hmm. I ordered a set of bags one time that turned out to have really oddly, the strap was just not the right length. It wasn't comfortable to carry. And I was really careful to never do that again. I wasn't really thinking about that when I ordered. But take your favorite bag and measure those straps and then make sure that you're looking for the right thing when you order because that will encourage or dissuade somebody from using your bag. And you know what? Things that happen at the farmer's market are maybe things that dif- that are different that happen at grocery stores with these bags because people are sticking big bouquets of flowers in them. Carrots with big fluffy tops are sticking out. Sunflower, like there's things that are sticking out. So if you have a short strap, it's just like stabbing you in the armpit. So make sure that your straps are long so those things can stick out the back like a baguette. My favorite thing to see, people walking around with a little baguette sticking out. It's very French. That's your second it. favorite oh, thing. My second Tell us thing. what your favorite thing is. <gasps> well, they don't put it in a bag because it's too big. But my favorite thing at the markets is people carrying gigantic plants. <laughs> you guys, this is, this is off topic, but I'm going to start an Instagram account that's like, what was I going to call it? I like big plants and I cannot lie. <laughs> People that come to the farmer's market and they buy these gigantic plants from our plant, from our nursery vendors, and they just carry it around. And it's like, I have questions for you. Like, how far away did you park? You have to carry it all the way back to your car. Was that an impulse buy? <laughs> like, they have like a lemonade and like a bag of flowers and a huge plant. Or like, I mean, this doesn't always happen, but it's like some, a lot of times there's like a guy and he's carrying this huge plant and he's walking behind this girl. And it's like your girlfriend. You just have to wonder. Your girlfriend made you, <laughs> you carry that plant. You don't have to wonder plant. much. 
Didn't, it's did, the best. didn't we see a guy a couple of weeks ago that had a huge plant in a backpack? And it stuck in his backpack. Smartest thing I ever saw. I took a picture and I shared it in our group chat. <laughs> Towered over him. Oh, it was amazing. Anyways, funniest oh, thing. Oh, my gosh. But I guess you could sell backpacks so people could put their big plants in there. True. Big mm-hmm. p- big plant backpacks. I see a, a new business coming on. All right. Yeah. Still that idea, too. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, the one of the decisions is single color or full color printing. Yeah. Overall, I like a single color bag. It's I mean, it's, they're just easier to print. Definitely cost you less to do. Um and I think they're kind of more hipster. You tell me, youth, youth there, oh, now youthful I'm a youth. person. Now I'm a youth. <laughs> more youthful than me. Let's say that. And what do your kids say? Do, are they inclined to wear four-color shirts or carry four-color bags? I don't think so, right? It's single color is kind of the, the hip thing. I think, yeah, for people who shop. I mean, which kids? <laughs> My kids that wears, like, Minecraft shirts? That's a lot of colors. It's too many colors. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I think that maybe simplicity is good. It's also, I mean, what I like to think about when I see a busy bag, sometimes they're really beautifully done artistically. But when I think about a bag, like what's the purpose of a bag? I want my customer to be carrying that bag and then I want someone across the street to be able to read what's on it. Right. So maybe like a plain color and a one color print that has your market name pretty big right. and obvious or yeah. like your big logo, like right. just a logo. You don't have to say much more. You don't. We've yeah. done a lot of stuff with logos. We have had over the years sort of a continuing series of each bag has our logo really big. And it always says San Diego because that makes people want to buy it that are tourists. They want to remember where they got it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have oftentimes, both on shirts and bags, used a vegetable or food oriented pun. Cat loves a pun. I do love a pun. Let me tell you. You know. <laughs> we use it in our email newsletter headlines. We use mm. it on our merchandise. And I do think people get a kick out of that. And because that changes kind of each year to a different design with a different pun on it, we have people that have collected whole series of bags. They love it. Yeah. They love it so much. Yeah. The dawning of the age of asparagus. I'm going to put <laughs> right. that on a bag. We haven't <laughs> put that on a bag yet. We use Good it for our newsletter that. a that's lot right. when okay. it's asparagus season. But yes, oh, things we might like have to that. Go there. We haven't used that one I yet. Know, oh, I know. That's fine. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just saw a meme and it was like, asparagus grows out of the ground in a way that looks like someone's trying to prank you into thinking this is how asparagus grows and they just like stuck it in the ground. That is what it looks like. That is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> like someone just stuck it in there and they're like, look, this is asparagus is growing right here. It looks like a joke. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop sidebarring. <laughs> what are we using now? We Oh, we have an artichoke on oh, our yeah. bag, and it says I get all choked up about local food. Yeah. It's been popular. So cute. People love it. They yeah. loved that shirt that said, um, shopping local gets me egg sighted, and it's had an egg on it. So simple. I People like went yeah. crazy for it. My, yeah. It's my husband's favorite shirt. So those are good. Okay. Yeah. Now, on sometimes like on a special occasion, we'll do a limited edition shirt that is very elaborately printed. That's got you know an actual commissioned piece of art from one of our artists. We just did a 15th anniversary bag, yeah, for one of our markets, and um, had a really beautiful drawing with some color in it that one of our artists did, and it showed the community sign and the market in front of it, and it was fun. Uh, that was on a really heavy duty canvas bag with a zipper, and we charged more for those. You know, we kind of said, this is our anniversary bag. Help us celebrate our anniversary and pay for our traffic control. (laughs) And we had, it was a limited edition. We only printed so many of them. We won't print them again. And people got really excited and paid a little more for those bags. They really liked it. And that artist had a booth at the market. She's not a regular vendor at our markets, but she kind of travels around. And so for part of the time that we were selling that bag, she was there selling her artwork. She was doing some live art. She has postcards. She had postcards with that image on it. And we were like, hey, the person that did this art has a booth right down there. You can go see her. And people really liked that connection and she loved it. Yeah. So yeah. So you can work that kind of thing. And it's fun when you can use something that one of your vendors creates to to add to your merch. Yeah. Smart idea that um, Chicago Green Market does. They have a robust fundraising program. I mean, mm-hmm. they do a whole bunch of friends of the market kind of fundraising and that kind of thing. And they print limited edition merch that only goes to people who donate over X amount to the market as part of the Friends of the Market program. And then their staff is trained to spot that limited edition bag or hat on somebody at the market and walk up to that shopper and thank them for their support. It's brilliant. So smart. That is so smart. It is. That is great. I love that. Yeah. So there's all kinds of things you can do with merch. And then there's a lot of just useful merch that's not necessarily necessarily useful just in particular for a market, but useful in general for people's homes. We saw so much of that stuff at the merch swap at Intense Conference last month. I wanted one of everything, first of all. (laughs) You did sneak in there and score something really cool, right? A mug? How dare you wrap me up? (laughs) (laughs) 
Yes, I got. I can never pronounce it. What was it? Oh, it was the one from Paducah, Kentucky? Paducah, Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is like the nicest mug. It's just the weight and size of mug that I enjoy. You know, everyone has their favorite. It's like weighted on the bottom. It's a beautiful color. I had to go in there and snag one. There was multiple mugs. Okay, I didn't take the only one. There were a lot of mugs, and mm-hmm. mugs were very popular. Yeah. So I can say that what we found popular in the merch swap, I would have a hunch that your shoppers will find attractive and, and appealing at your market. Yeah. I know that... Our producer, Leandra, got a an insulated Boise Farmer's Market mug mm-hmm. either this year or last that she's very attached to. She'll fight for that mug. Her husband has not a chance <laughs> of getting that mug. We, so it's good because you use it every – a mug is something maybe you're drinking out of every day. So, like, think about marketing. It's like, yeah. oh, that's reminding me to go to the market because I'm drinking my coffee out of this. Exactly. Yeah. Tuscaloosa Farmer's Market, mm-hmm. um, I think that's the Riverside Farmer's Market that's down there, they brought these – Really simple. I bet they didn't pay a ton for them. They're mm-hmm. flexible cutting boards. Mm-hmm. What are those? Plastic? Some kind yeah. of one. Yeah. You know the material I'm talking about. But they're cutting boards and they have a pretty logo and Tuscaloosa Farmer's Market on them. Okay. So every time somebody's chopping vegetables, they're thinking about your farmer's market. I thought that was so smart. Super, super smart. Coasters. Yeah. Yep, coasters. We saw someone that had like a phone charging device. That's, That's super smart because everyone needs that. Um, the canvas hats. With the embroidered logo or like little fruit or veggie on there, those were super popular at the merch swap, and I'm sure they'd be popular at um, a market. We haven't done it. We've done a couple hats. We've done a couple hats. They were okay. A couple of of hats have been popular. I'm not really a ball cap kind of person. I might do a bucket hat, though. Oh, look at you. That's hip. Those are coming Uh, back. Are they? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Why check them out? My head is gigantic, and so I can only fit into trucker hats. It's the only one I've ever had in the merch (laughs) booth, and people were like, oh, this is nice. Like, some. People like them, but I'm like, oh, sorry, I don't think about like regular hats because I've never worn one in my life. My head is huge. (laughs) But hats are good, especially, I mean, (laughs) hats are great because you're outside and people might be like dying because it's sunny and they didn't bring a hat and they forgot that they're going outside to hang out. So true. We've never done sunglasses, but I've seen people do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That can be a thing in a really bright place. Mm -hmm. Um, Water bottles, always good. You can use those at the market. You can use them elsewhere and it'll remind you of the market. You need something cute on those. And if you have water bottles, you got to have those stickers because people really get about collecting the stickers to put on the bottles now. People are into the stickers. They are. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big thing. That's what the youth's Um, like. (laughs) That's what the youth's like. We've heard that. (laughs) Heard that. And then going away from the youths, mm-hmm. or maybe the, maybe they're back, and maybe the youth like these too, but kind of old school, but still popular, mm-hmm. tea towels. Oh, yeah. I can't believe the number of markets I go to that are selling really cute kitchen towels, and I think they sell. Yeah, and food-related. Yeah, so exactly. So it's great. That's a nice tie-in. Yeah, still for in the sure. kitchen while you're doing your things. Yep. Um, you know, tourist like bags. Postcards. I've seen postcard sets that are pretty cool. Yeah, and that's pretty, like, low overhead, the postcards. Just put them in a little set. It's a nice marketing tool. It's a nice thing for tourists. They'll buy them. Or just for folks in your neighborhood that want to send a note to somebody. Around yeah. the holidays, you can have different kinds of cards available, too. Right. Oh, yeah. People would like that. Mm-hmm. I do want to throw one thing in here in terms of merch that is not branded. It is not necessarily going to get people back to your market, but I love them so much. Mm-hmm. And that's our Just Makes Macrame, <laughs> who sells at the market and brought to the conference her crocheted blueberries and pickles and little chickens, little chickens and bubble bees. <laughs> So cute. It's the cutest. Those kind of merch items would be great, too. They don't have to be branded. Right. I mean, it's nice to use it as a marketing tool, but you don't have to. You can just offer something in your booth. I mean, maybe just be careful of not overstepping onto your vendors, kind of. True. What they're selling at their booths, but offering your customers something that is farmer's market related. Yeah, you know? something fun. And yeah. it's nice to have something for kids. Yeah. So we've had fanny packs. Yep. Those can be handy for kids. Um, yeah, more kid stuff. We've done little What'd stickers. Do? We do child size t shirts, which like leads us into t shirts. Yes. Which is a whole new ball game. It's mm-hmm. a it's a big subject because you have to deal with sizes. Yes. I mean, there's merch that comes in sizes and a one size fits all merch, like a bag. So merch that comes in sizes is just trickier because you just tougher. end up sitting on inventory. Yeah. So it's a bigger investment. You can't really do that unless you've got some money to let sit literally mm-hmm. on the table yeah. for a while until you sell through it. When we've had shirts, most often what has happened is we've printed T-shirts for our vendors, which yep. we tend to do for a long time. We did it once a year, sometimes twice a year. We would do it at a holiday, and then we'd do it on our anniversary time. Yeah. And we would print T-shirts for all of our vendors, and now some of our markets have grown so big that that's really a lot of investment. On the mm-hmm. other hand, we've got big markets, and so you know we're generating more income, and we still think it's really wonderful. The vendors get so excited by it when we give out a T-shirt. 
they wear those T-shirts everywhere, including to other markets, which always makes us laugh. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I see folks coming to my market wearing like a little Santa Monica jacket or a little Hillcrest T-shirt. It's like, hey. Hey. So then that motivates me to want to print a T-shirt for our vendors. So make sure that they're wearing ours. I am Um, in mid-order of a very large order for our vendor shirt. So any of our vendors listening. A shirt is coming your way. Shirt's You're coming very your way. excited. Yes. Pretty soon. But it is a hassle because I kind of have to like guess what everyone's shirt size is, which is also not something I want to do to kind of get close to numbers. And then I always order more to cover. Right. Yeah. And so that's one way we've ended up with T-shirts to sell mm-hmm. is that we just round that order up by, you know, an extra four or five dozen. Mm-hmm. Anything that we have left over because we had to order extras of a size to make sure we could cover everybody with sizes, that can all go in there. So we sell them. What we've done a lot of times with that, though, not so much the leftovers, is that when we order up by that extra four or five dozen, we do it in a different color. Yeah. So the vendors can still feel like their shirt is special. Nobody else has it but them. Yeah. And then we'll order sometimes the same shirt in yet another color that's only for our staff. Yeah. Yes. I always try. We have had times before where our staff is wearing the same shirts that we give our vendors Which is fun because it kind of like links us together. But then it's also like a little bit confusing. And I don't want shoppers thinking that like the vendors are our staff. Right. Just because sometimes vendors don't know all the answers to the questions and things like that. And I don't want the vendors to be like peppered with questions from shoppers about the market in general. That's why we have a staff. So kind of delineating that a little bit. but, But yeah. Yeah, now we always put market staff on the back of the shirts. Yeah. Farmer's market don't just happen. Things to point out that these are people that are working at the market. Mm-hmm. So And so typically then we try to sell shirts that are a different color than the staff or the vendors, even if they have the same design or the same pun or something on them. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's good to get everybody in your merch, though. And the vendors really appreciate it. They think it's fun. Some of our vendors still wear the shirts that we gave them like eight years ago. They still wear it to the market today. Like, yeah. I just, I mean, they love it. You know, Will at Subspin, he has that uh, 24 carat. Oh, 24 one. carat, yeah. Yeah, with a little carrot grin on and it. Carrot. Yeah, yeah. Grin, and cr- grin and carrot. Yeah. That's what it said. <laughs> it has been a little Lily Mercado. So cute. It is still weird. That was old one. I like seeing the old ones. They're mm-hmm. fun when they come around. Yeah. But but people do love T-shirts. So if you can manage the inventory, if you've got the some money in reserve that you can invest in that and having those around because they might take a while to... you got to order a pretty big order to not pay an arm and a leg for T-shirts. The more you order, the cheaper it is because once those printing presses or those silk screeners start rolling, they can knock out so many so fast. But those first ones take a lot of time. Um, If you've got that to invest, certainly people love to buy market T-shirts. We've sold a lot of market T-shirts. We have purchased a lot of market (laughs) T-shirts. I have a whole closet full of my favorite market T-shirts. Yes, and I love buying market T-shirts at other markets. So I, I am my own target audience here. So I try to always print a shirt that I would buy at another market. Make it like like simple but personal enough to your market. I don't know. I right. mean, and everyone kind of likes a different thing. But having something that's of value that doesn't just – I mean, maybe have a shirt with just your logo on it, I guess. But I think it's kind of cute to jazz it up a little bit. Right. Have something special. Have something new year after year if you're going to do a T-shirt every year. So, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That can be nice. Mm-hmm. And, and it's nice in that situation, too, to make the extra effort to order a few that are – XXXL. Yeah. And to order some kids t-shirts so mm-hmm. that, you know, be inclusive. Understand that there's all kinds of people that come to your market in all shapes and sizes and ages. Yeah. That's always really helpful. It's really nice when folks are like, oh, I need a 4XL. And it's like, oh, we have that. No, And, you know, it's always like yeah. nice for them because right. I think even vendors, it's hard to stock all those sizes all the time. And so it's nice for those shoppers to be able to get something at the market that they can wear yeah. and they feel really good about it, just yeah. like everyone else who's getting a shirt. So, yep. Yep. Good kids option, too. Yeah. So if you're going to use merch um, for to produce income in mm-hmm. addition to marketing, there are some things you got to think about. So it's just like any vendor that has to look at what should they be selling and at what price should they be selling it and making sure that... I would say in the case of the market, if it's an item that's going to give you some marketing push, maybe you don't have to make a profit, but but you're still going to need to make sure that you break even most likely. You're not going to want to be putting a lot of merch out there that you're losing money on every time you make a sale. So there's a lot of things to think about when it gets to that. Um, one is the item cost. And I think, Bridget, you had just uh, bid an item that we had produced over and over with the same vendor, the same supplier, and mm-hmm. you actually bid it out to determine whose pricing was better. And a lot of times there's a lot of elements to that. Like maybe the basic shirt is priced cheaper at this one vendor, but the printing is 
is more expensive or Mm -hmm. um, there's something they charge a higher setup charge. So you have to look at all the numbers when you're making those calculations. Yeah, because everything they could say, oh, this shirt is like six dollars. But then it's like, oh, there's setup cost. There's a shipping cost. There's um, this is how long it takes. And then also if you have like a sponsor that's helping pay for the shirts, it's like you have to you want to get them the best price. And so they're not paying, you know the most expensive printer in town to print for these. So, yeah, just trying to figure out, you know, best cost on that. And if yeah. you have time to price it out, which, honestly, we rarely do. We're always like, oh, my God, we need a shirt. We, we just, just call our, go to our fastest, wait, fastest most dependable guy. guy. <laughs> and a lot of times, you know what, even if we cost it out and it's a little bit less to go with somebody else, we end up back with him because yeah. he has done such a good job for us and comes through when we're in a rush. And we do like to patronize local printers yeah. as opposed to ordering out. Yeah. Um, but then you can't just look at what it costs you to print it. You need, number one, make sure the setup cost, which always applies, is in there mm-hmm. in your total. You're going to add up all of your costs, and then you're going to divide it out by how many of those you've got and, and decide on your, your price, what you're going to sell it for. So make sure the setup cost is in there. Make sure shipping is in there. A lot of times there's a shipping fee. Even if you're getting it printed locally, they have to pay to get the actual shirt shipped in, mm-hmm. and a shipping fee will turn up on your invoice. Um, make sure that shrinkage is included there. Now, I always count for like 12% of shrinkage, and by that, I mean that I start out with 100 shirts, but I really only sell, what is that, 88, Mm -hmm. Um, because we give some of them away. You know, we'll give somebody a promo shirt. We'll give one to a board member. We'll give one to a vendor that's having a rough day, and we just want to give them a little boost. Mm -hmm. And then some get, quote, unquote, lost. (laughs) I mean, they just do. Things happen like people grab a T-shirt because they forgot to wear their uniform shirt to the market and nobody writes it down and it just kind of fades out of inventory or, oh, it rains and and we aren't quite quick enough to pick the shirts up off the table. So some get wet to the extent or, or muddy or what have you that, that just can't be salvaged. So there's going to be some what they call in retail shrinkage. There's some shirts that just fall off your balance sheet that didn't really get sold. So I usually... I've had enough experience at it that I just have a percentage now that I build in when I'm figuring out prices. And related to that, I think recognize that if you're in an info booth and you have stuff on your table, some people think it's giveaways. True. So I've seen people pick up our bags and kind of walk away. And I'm like, oh, hey, we're selling those. And, you know, they're not doing it. They're not trying to steal it. They're like, oh, sorry, I thought you were giving these away because they're the info booth, which happens at a lot of info booths or if they're at like a trade show or something, they kind of have that mindset. So have a big old price sign for sure with your merch and that'll kind of avoid that kind of awkward conversation or people might take it and you might not see them. So then that's walking away from your table. Yeah. So shrinkage in the retail world can also include theft, you know, shoplifting and things. I think we don't have that happen as much. But as you say, there's probably some unintentional things that happen like that. Mm -hmm. We find in, I mean, it's a big deal actually for us if we're not really careful to keep our merchandise secure. Mm -hmm. There's a thing where Somebody on the maintenance crew will grab a shopping bag to haul around their extension cords. Yeah. They don't think bag. of it as stealing. It's yeah. just a bag. I mean, a lot of places you go give you a bag, a grocery store or what have you. So they're not yeah. thinking about they're taking something of value. Mm-hmm. It, they just don't think it through. But meanwhile, you know, you've paid $8 for that insulated bag and, and that's gone. So you got to count that into what you're going to charge for the bags that you're still holding on to. Exactly. So make sure you price not just to cover the cost of what you paid for and maybe like a little bit more, but maybe a little bit extra to cover for all for that right, loss right. percentage. All those things. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to make sure that credit card processing is built in there. I mean, we explain this to our vendors. Oftentimes you'll see a vendor that's adding on the cost of doing the credit card processing, which mm-hmm. in many cases is not legal. In a variety of states, it's not legal to add that credit card processing charge. But what's perfectly legal is to consider that credit card processing charge a cost of doing business, which it is. It's something that's going to come out of your net and just build that into the price. So you know it's going to cost you an extra 3.8% to run a credit card. And you know nowadays most of your sales are going to be on credit cards. So you just increase the cost of your item by that 4%. It's just there. It's just built in. And that way, again, you're getting to an accurate calculation on what it costs you to produce that item. So then you can decide how to price that item. Yeah. Same thing with sales tax. So there's a lot of folks, especially working for nonprofits, that will call the price of a shopping bag or a T-shirt a donation to the nonprofit. Well, dig down, and in most states, there are federal and state exemptions for nonprofits paying income tax. But many states, and I just looked it up recently, and I think it's like 17 states, there's absolutely no exemption for nonprofits selling retail items. They are still responsible for the full amount of sales tax. So... We'll do a little disclaimer like some of our presenters at the Intense Conference did and say, we are not giving you legal advice. We're not lawyers. We're not accountants. We don't even play them on TV. 
Don't take this as legal advice, but maybe get some legal advice or check with your state taxation agency and find out if you're going to be responsible for sales tax. And then if you are, you can either add that when you make the sale. Some people find it more comfortable just to put a flat rate on the bag and say, look, this bag is $18. I know in my head that almost $2 of that is going back to the state as sales tax. And then you got to do that calculation at the, the bottom. But it's something that you need to, if you're going to absorb it, you got to Add that into your calculation so that when you divide out by the number of shirts you ordered, you know what you paid for each one. Yeah. And it might end up that you're looking at a number that's a little bit higher than you thought you were comfortable charging for the merchandise. But don't charge less just because you think people are going to be uncomfortable with the price. Make sure you're charging a number where you're not going to go in the hole getting merchandise out and right. selling it from your info booth. Yeah, I mean, hopefully when you add it all up, it comes to a number where you may not be able to double it. Like in a standard retail operation, you would, you know, your cost of goods is usually 40 to 50 percent. So you're doubling the price of it or adding it up. So there's a significant margin. Maybe you don't need a huge margin. I mean, it's mm-hmm. nice if you can get a little income stream from your merch. Maybe you're using it more for marketing. But correct Maybe only add a buck yeah. to what your real cost is. But don't add a buck to what that base cost is without taking in all those other considerations because pretty soon you're losing something every time you make a sale. Yeah, and think about how much money – I mean, if you need to use it as an income source, how much income do you need to bring in? And think about that as a realistic number. I think mostly I use the bag income, like the bags that we sell, the income margin that I make on that. I use that to turn around and buy vendor shirts. Right. And I use it to do our like holiday, like our annual party cost and like our whole I usually like use my retail income for like vendor appreciation things or staff appreciation things. So that's kind of that pot. But think about is it something that you need that income to manage your business to like pay for business costs? Then that's a different conversation you need to have with yourself and with your business plan and put an actual number on there. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Doing this whole exercise is going to give you a huge amount of empathy for your vendors who are stuck Mm -hmm. in the same thing. Gives you a skill to use to remind your vendors that, hey, did you count for the label that you're sticking on there? Did you count that when you were calculating your cost before you set your price? So Mm -hmm. it'll give you some good knowledge that you can pass on to your vendors. So again, they're neither of you are putting things on the table that it's costing you money to sell. Yeah. A good reminder in general at markets. Yep. (laughs) So then once you have a bunch of merchandise, uh, there's a whole thing about taking care of it. Yep. So we talked about keeping it secure. You want to have a place that you can lock your stuff up. Um, Finding ways to keep things dry. Yeah, that's right. Got to use those plastic tubs. We used to, like, keep them in shopping bags. We used to keep the shirts in shopping bags. We did. It wasn't uh, so secure. And did we... Add up the cost of that shopping bag that we kept shirts in. Did we take that into account? Sure I hope we, so. I'm sure we did. Of course. <laughs> of course we did. <laughs> or like a plastic tub with like the folding top versus the flat top. I think the folding top, like stuff would get in there, like little debris or whatever, have a rainy day. That's how water gets in those tubs. So just get something really secure. Think about weather. Think about folks hauling it around in and out of the storage. Um, what, I try not to go with tubs that are too huge because yeah. I want to make sure nobody's picking up something that's crazy heavy once it's loaded. Exactly. Yep. So make sure it's manageable. Um, I've seen lots of different ways that folks have their merch at their booths, like a plastic drawer situation. So you have, you have the sizes separated, something that's easy like that. A tub with wheels that you can wheel out. Um, yeah, so lots of ways to keep it kind of secure. You want to make sure, I think... What happens most of the time is that we, like, drop the shirts on the ground and we're outside and so the shirt, like, gets a little dirty. So then it's like, can what are you going to do with that? You know, take it home and wash it. I don't know. But um, think about that, keeping your merch secure, think keeping it in good condition, um, displaying it as well. We have Manny, our mannequin <laughs> at our market. <laughs> His name is Manny. We put a hat and a fanny pack on him. He's gorgeous. Um, so we have like a little mannequin torso that we use to display the shirt, like someone wearing the shirt. We've also used like metal grids in the back of our booth to hang them up, hang them on hangers. You can have a clothing rack. You can have baskets with the shirts folded or rolled up and tied in there. Um, you want to make it appealing. Maybe walk around and see the vendors that are selling merch and what's kind of an attractive display to you and do that same thing in your info booth if you're selling merch there. Yeah, it's just like any vendor. You've got to make that stuff appealing. And you have to have enough of it on the table that people Mm -hmm. don't feel like, oh, this is the the last thing left that nobody else wanted. Yeah. You know, they say, (laughs) what do they say in produce? Pile it high and see it fly. (laughs) So (laughs) we just had this situation in the market because Manny was wearing like an old dirty shirt. And we had like one large and one like kid small shirt. It was like the very end of the inventory and we kept setting them out. And then finally I was like, no, guys, we have to like we're calling it a day with these shirts. Like, we're going to get some new ones in. We have to retire these 
when life gives you lemons, sell them at the farmer's market shirt. Oh, that we did our, like that shirt. Uh, yeah, was our, that was our last shirt that we had. So it was time to retire because there wasn't, it just looked pitiful. So it's better to have no merch than a pitiful little old pile of merch. Absolutely. Here's my pro tip for you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that, that is a pro tip. Yeah. Um, inventory it regularly. There's a few reasons you want to do that. One is that if you're obvious, very obviously counting it yeah. in and out and you're making sure people pay for it and you pay for it yourself. If mm-hmm. you're at the market and you don't have to ha- happen to have a shopping bag with you, make a show of paying for your shopping bag mm-hmm. so that your team and the people around you understand that these things have value. Yeah. So ca- if you're never counting them up and you're just tossing them back and forth, why would your team s- take seriously that these have value and they need to be protected and that they're not just giveaways that somebody should walk off with. Exactly. Yep. Um, another thing that we do is we give like we have like a vendor price. If a vendor wants to buy a bag, we do like two dollars off or something like that. We have it in our um, like our QuickBooks reader, and so you can give a vendor price for folks or like local business owner prices or something like that. If you want to give folks a discount on something, again, think about the cost and think about what's a price you can really let this go at. But if uh, staff wants to buy additional things. I mean, I usually give my staff a bag and I, of course, give them staff shirts. But if they want to buy additional items, you can have a special price for them. Yeah, that helpful. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And then the other reason, of course, that you want to do regular inventory is because you want to reorder before you run out. Before you only have one shirt on Manny and one <laughs> shirt on the table, you want to have ordered those shirts earlier. I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes, that that's happens. great advice. That's great advice. Keep an eye on that. Yep. Yeah. And you don't have to be paying those rush charges for shopping bags because nobody paid attention that we ordered the last box and now the last three bags are on the table. So a regular inventory system will save you a lot of aggravation and sometimes some money. I love my collection of merchandise from farmers markets all over the U.S., Europe and beyond. Those bags are handy for shopping wherever I am. Glancing at a kitchen towel from a market in New York brings back fond memories. And using a magnet from our newest local market to stick my meal plan to my fridge reminds me to go. Because heaven knows I don't have time to shop at my own market. Merchandise can be an extra income stream, and it's always a clever marketing tool. So stock up. Thanks for listening today, and big thanks to Square for helping farmers market participants and managers increase their income and reduce their stress, and for supporting Tent Talk, the farmers market podcast. To sign up for easy credit card processing and sales tax tracking on site at Markets, click the Square logo on the resource page at FarmersMarketPros.com. Thanks for listening to Tent Talk today. Please leave us a review on your podcast app or wherever you listen to Tent Talk. Let us and others know how you're enjoying the podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of Tent Talk. Connect with fellow Farmers Market folks in our private Facebook group, the Farmers Market Pros Community. And follow us on Instagram at Farmers Market Pros. Find online education and other resources at FarmersMarketPros.com. Tent Talk is brought to you by Farmers Market Pros, where passion meets profit. Tent Talk is hosted by Cat Fields White and Bridget Myers and produced by Leandra Hayes, with original music by David Mead. Tune in next week for another great episode.